All right, so for today's On One Live webinar, we're gonna be talking about modifying portraits. And in the last few portrait webinars, we've been modifying a lot of portraits that have color. So I thought it'd be fun to go in today and actually modify these portraits with black and white and really kind of bring out the grungy, moody tones of these images. So we'll start here with this photograph. And this was taken at Cannon Beach on an overcast day, which is really probably the best weather to take a grungy kind of moody photograph. So we'll start here, and I'm just gonna make sure it's selected. I can head into the Develop tab instead of the Edit module really easily by just hitting D on my keyboard. All right, so to start off with this photo, I need to set my foundational tone. So I'm not gonna crop it first. I'm gonna head into my tone and color first thing. So inside of my tone and color, since I was shooting in RAW, I could actually choose a different camera profile. So I'm gonna head into my camera profiles here and one that I liked earlier was this on one landscape. And the reason that I like this when I was playing with this earlier is because if I go to on one standard and I go back to on one landscape, it really kind of brings out some of these whites and it almost creates a little bit more separation from her and the background, which I'm actually looking for in the shot. So just by hitting the on one landscape camera profile, you can see it does a pretty good job of just livening up the shot a little bit. Well, now we can head into our tone and color area and we can actually modify a few of these sliders. So I'm only gonna modify just a few just to set sort of a, a base uh, look for the shot and then we can actually go in and convert it to black and white and bring in all the mood and the style. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull back on the exposure a little bit. Probably just like, eh, I'll actually just leave the exposure how it is. And I'm gonna zoom in here so I can kind of get an eye of what I'm doing. And for this particular shot, because I do want to create a little bit more contrast between her and the background, I'm going to pull up on this contrast slider. Now the contrast slider is going to add in black. So by pulling up on that contrast, you can see that I actually darkened a lot of these areas on her. So if I pull up on my contrast, I need to go down here to my midtones and my shadows, and then I can give life back to those midtones by pulling up on my midtones slider. And with portraits, remember that a lot of your mid-tones are going to be skin tones. So by pulling up on these mid-tones right here, I'm actually bringing out a lot of those skin tones in Charlotte. Okay, so now I can head down and I'm just gonna pull up just a hair on my shadows, just a little bit, probably about right there. And then I'm actually gonna go down to my whites and I'm gonna pull those up a little bit as well. And the reason I'm pulling off on these whites is because again, I just wanna create a little bit more separation between her and this background area. Maybe a little more on the whites. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, it's turning out pretty good so far. So the one thing I think I could do down here is I'm actually gonna go down into my color area and I'm just gonna increase the temperature just a little bit. And that's gonna bring just a little bit more warmth in here, so if we do go to convert it to black and white and we're playing with our color mixer, we have a little bit more control over the warm colors because our image is more uh, warm. Actually, maybe a little bit more warm. We'll pull up to like 12. Perfect. Okay, so for this shot, I was actually modifying my transform area earlier and it made her stand out quite a bit more in the frame. So I'm gonna head down in my transform pane. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to go into my vertical area and I'm going to play with the vertical transform perspective to see if I can't make her seem a little bit larger and make it look like we're a little bit lower of an angle shooting this. So I'm just going to pull back on my vertical or pull up on my vertical. There we go. So this is making it seem like I was a little bit lower and a little bit further away when I was taking this photo and I'm just kind of elongating the shadow. So what I wanna do with this black and white is I really wanna bring this shadow into play with the photo. So I'm gonna make sure I go into this transform area and I'm gonna make her seem a little bit further away than she was. And I'm doing that by kind of pulling this foreground area up and you can see it's pushing the top area back a little bit and it's bringing the shadow up closer to us so it looks like I was shooting a little bit lower at this beach. So now inside this transform tool, I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna pull up on my scale. And I'm gonna pull up on my scale until I can just remove the black areas that I created. Just like that. 
Well, another thing I want to do is I'm actually just going to go in here and I'm going to make sure that my aspect ratio is natural. So if I modify this aspect ratio, I can elongate it or I can make it smaller and wider. I'm just going to pull up on it about three. And that'll just bring back a little bit of that natural height that we had when we begin editing this photo. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, it seems like she's a little bit more prominent in the frame and we're really a lot more focused on this shadow area. So I turn this transform off and on. I really like what that's doing. And then I can actually pull in maybe a little bit more on the scale, about right there. Okay, so now let's go in and just crop a little bit of this top area out. So I'm just gonna hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. And I'm gonna go up and let's see if a four by five works. Uh, let's just do the original ratio. And then I'll just hold down shift, pull this in a little bit, make sure she's center in the frame. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm level just by heading up to my level slider here. And then I'll click and drag on this horizon line. There we go. And now my image is centered. So now that we've modified our basic tonality and we've modified our cropping and sort of the, the perspective of the image, now we can actually head in and we can start modifying it to convert it to a black and white. So I'm just gonna head into effects here and there's a few different ways that you can convert your image to black and white. So we'll add a filter, and the first way to do it is you can head down here and you could just click black and white. And this is probably the most practical way to do it. And you can, then you can head into your black and white settings and you can modify these to kind of fit your image. But one thing that I like to do with my black and whites, and it may not be the most professional way to do it, but I just add a filter and I go in and I add a LUTs filter. And I head into my category, and I love, love, love the black and white LUTs in this filter. Or the third way that you can convert it to a black and white is just by adding a filter, and you could add your channel mixer. And in these presets, they have an, a lot of awesome preset styles for black and whites. And you can use them to really get creative modifying your photo. But I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add a LUTs filter and I'll add a black and white. And one of my favorites here is this fixer. So if I turn this off and on here, I really like that high contrast black and white. It really looks nice, creating that nice separation between her and the background right there. Okay, so now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, we're really on the right track with this black and white. I think there's just a few creative things that we could do to the shot to really bring it to life. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm actually gonna go in here and I'm gonna paint just a little bit more of this reflection shadow. So I'm gonna go into my local adjustments. I'm gonna, oh, I already have one. So in this new local adjustment layer, I'm gonna rename it and I'm gonna name it shadow reflection. I'm gonna make sure I'm set to paint with color, and then I'm gonna head into this color area and I'm going to choose black. So now I'm actually painting black color directly onto my photo. So I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard. And then I'm just gonna kinda of brush this out. Oh, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna make sure my opacity is set to 100. That's pretty important. And then I'm just gonna brush this on and you can see how it's kinda of just brushing on And we're just kind of emulating the same shadow that's there, but we're just painting over it like that. So now we'll head into our shadow reflection, and obviously that looks pretty realistic, huh? I'm just kidding. So we're gonna head into our shadow re reflection here, and I'm gonna go to my blending options, and I'm actually gonna go to my mode, and I'm gonna head down to soft light, just like that. So now that looks a little bit better, right? If I turn this off and on, still pretty, pretty strong in here. 
Well, we're going to head down to our Apply To menu. Oh, not our Apply To menu. We're going to head down to our Apply To area, and then this Highlight Shadow Skin area, we can actually protect these three different tonal ranges. So I want to protect my shadows and my highlights and my skin. I can actually pull up on these sliders, and you can see it kind of protects those shadowy areas. But one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up on the skin area because the skin basically is telling me that it's mid-tones. So if I want to remove this from some of the mid-tones, I can pull up on the skin slider, and you can see it blends in a lot more naturally with the reflection. And then I can lower the opacity, like that. And then I'm going to head up to my opacity on my brush. I'm going to lower that a little bit. I'm going to make sure this is set to paint out because I'm going to want to remove some of this reflection. So I'm going to hold down shift and hit X on my keyboard. And then I'm just going to paint a little bit of this shadow out of the original reflection. So now if I turn the shadow reflection off and on, we could probably even remove a little bit more. There we go. But it adds in a lot more to that reflection and kind of brings up the leading line right to the viewer. I think we could add in just a little bit more. Perfect. So now let's go into effects. I'll add a filter. And one thing I want to do to this shot is I just want to bring in a little bit more lens blur to this foreground area. So I'm going to add a lens blur here. And to make sure it's just applied to this bottom area, I'm going to use a masking bug. So to grab me my masking bug, I'm going to hit M on my keyboard. And I'm going to head up to my presets. And this linear top preset is going to allow me to apply this to the bottom area and protect the top. So if I drop this down right here, I'm just going to pull this down so it's right under her boots, maybe even a little bit more. And now if I turn off this lens blur, We can add in just a little bit more maybe right there. And then I could head into my local adjustments and I could bring back some of this shadow. Perfect. So now if I turn this, turn these adjustments off and on, kind of a whole different perspective and really brings in the attention to her right there by using this sort of leading line, almost emulating a street photography look on the beach. And then one last thing we could do to the shot, I could add a filter, and I'll add a vignette. And we'll use Big Softy, and oop, if I turn this off and on, I don't really want it applied to her up there, so I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my masking brush, make sure my opacity is at 100. And then I can just paint this off of Charlotte. And then the vignette really helps to just bring our attention into her. All right, so we can move on to the next shot here. And we'll do another beach photo. I think beach photos, especially on overcast days, are awesome, awesome photo opportunities for moody photos. So let's continue on the moody photo train. Okay. So with this shot right here, I think this would look awesome in a black and white with just a little bit of color tint to it. So the first thing we need to do is we'll just go into our develop tab here and we'll set our foundational tone for the shot. So inside of my develop tab, I'm actually gonna go into my camera profile and I'm gonna see if any of these work really well for the shot. I like this one. I think this on one landscape provides a little bit more separation between her and this rock area. Yeah, so we'll leave it at that, just like that. So now I'm going to head in here, and I'm not going to modify too many of these sliders. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull up on this exposure right here. Then I'll add in some contrast. And I'm not really too worried about adding in too much contrast because I can always go back and remove it. And also if we're applying a black and white style to the shot, I really like a lot of contrast in black and white, so it's not really 
too big of a deal. But depending on what you're editing, if you're editing, you know, a more realist, natural looking shot, you could probably avoid using so much contrast in your photo. But if you're just modifying a nice black and white, especially on a beach day like this with an overcast lighting, you can always bring in a little bit more contrast because the overcast light is going to remove a lot of contrast from your photos. So now we have our contrast in there. And then I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull back on these highlights. And I just want to bring in a little bit of this cloud detail right there. I think that's pretty, pretty satisfying to see in this background right here is that cloud detail. So then we'll head down here and I'm going to pull back on the whites a little bit. I'll pull up on my midtones of hair. And then I'm going to hold down my J key. And then I'm going to pull back on these blacks until I see just a little bit of true black right there with that blue overlay. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard. Sweet. I really like that. I really like the separation between her and the background a lot better now than with this shot. Okay, so to stylize this photograph, we're actually gonna head into effects and I'm gonna add a filter and I'm gonna add one of my favorite new filters here and it's this all new sun flare filter. And sun flares actually look awesome with black and white shots if you can pull them off. So let's see if we can't do that with this photo. So in the sun flare filter, you can modify a lot of the things that go into your sun flare look. The first thing I'm gonna modify is this amount. So I'm just gonna pull up on the amount to 100 that's just gonna tell me to, or that's just telling PhotoRaw to bring out 100% of this sun flare filter. And then I'm gonna head down to my brightness and I'm gonna increase the brightness just a little bit. Just like that. Now let's head down here in my, in my amount. I'm gonna pull up on this sunshine amount. And what that's doing is that's bringing in a little bit more contrast into her, but it's also kind of brightening the highlights in the sun flare filter. So if I pull this back and up, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's just sort of emulating a sunshine look on the shot. But the thing I love about this is it's really creating a lot of separation between her and the background, which I want in this photo. So probably about right there. And one thing you could do with the sunflower filter is you could always brush it off a little bit. So I could zoom in here I can hit B on my keyboard, I'll lower my opacity quite a bit. And then I can kind of just brush this off her jacket so it's not so prominent. And then I'll create even more separation between her and the foreground. Maybe not that much. That's not bad. Cool. So now we have our sun flare and we have our base tonality for the shot. Now we can actually convert it to a black and white. So I'm gonna add a filter and for landscapes, I typically like to use the channel mixer when I'm converting to black and white. And if I'm using portraits, I typically like to use LUTs. So since this is more of a portrait landscape kind of lifestyle type photograph, I'm actually gonna head into my channel mixer filter first. So inside of my channel mixer, to convert it to a black and white, I can head in here to my more styles and I'm going to use this, what was I using earlier? Yeah, let's use this red filter actually. Perfect. And now we have our sort of sun flare over here. We have our black and white and it looks just a little bit too bright. So I'm actually going to head into my develop tab here. I'm gonna pull back on that exposure and now I'm gonna add a new filter inside of effects and I'm gonna add the curves filter. So with this curves filter, I wanna bring in some nice kind of moody style and an easy way to do that is just to head down to this bottom left corner of my tone curve, which is my black point. Now I'm gonna grab my black point and if I pull up on it and to the right, it's gonna add in a bunch of little or a bunch of little, it's gonna add in a bunch of contrast to the shot, but it's also going to add in some nice faded matty look to the image. So watch as I pull this up. 
See how it's bringing in some fade to the shot? And then the further I go to the right, the more contrast it's going to bring in. So I think that looks pretty good right there. I kind of like that mood right there. Now I'm going to pull back on the shadows. And then I'm going to head up here. And this area is going to be my mid-tone sort of highlight area. And then I can just bring those back up so that the image isn't flat. And what we've done here is we've kind of created sort of a basic S-curve. And what an S-curve does is it brings in some contrast to your photo. It brings in uh, a little bit of true black by pulling down on your shadow points down here. But then it also returns your mid-tones and highlights back to where they were so they're not flat on the photo. But you can see it does a lot to the photograph. And we can probably go back here and remove some of that. Maybe we'll pull back. There we go. Sweet. So I think I like that look on the shot for right now. So now let's head in. And I'm going to add another filter. And we were talking earlier about bringing in a little bit of color to this black and white. And one filter that I really like to use to bring in color to um, black and white photographs is this vintage filter. And one of my favorites here is this oatmeal. And I can always lower the opacity. But even lower the opacity and just kind of bringing this back up, you can see it just adds some nice kind of warm light onto this photo. And I really, really like what that's doing for this shot. So I think one thing we could go in here and add is we could add a filter. And lately, I've been really playing with a lot more textures. So we could add a texture. And I really love light leaks. So let's go in here to these light leaks. Ooh, yeah, a lot of these look really good. I think I like that one a lot. I think that looks really cool with the light coming down into here. And we can always pull up on the opacity so it's a little bit stronger like that. Play with our mode. Eh, lighter looks good. And then let's bring back some of that light. Lower the saturation a bit. Eh. Sweet. So now if we have the backslash key on our keyboard, So let's start first with our color grunge shot. So the first thing I'm going to do in this photo is I'm going to go into develop, and I'm going to modify my base look for the shot. So let's go in here to our camera profile first, and I'm going to add on one vivid. And the reason I want on one vivid is because it's bringing out some of those color tones that were lost in this on one standard. So you can see that by clicking on that on one vivid, brings out a lot more of that orange and that great warmth in her hair. Okay, so now we can head into our tone of color. And I think this shot looks pretty good as far as the exposure goes. I mean, we're going to make it a little bit moodier anyway, so we're not too incredibly worried about having the correct exposure. But I think we could go in here and just pull up on the contrast a little bit. That's going to create a little more separation between, or not separation, that's going to create a little bit more darkness around these areas. So she kind of blends in a little bit more. And in doing that, and kind of blending her in with the background, we're really focused on the light on her face. So with this portrait, I, I think what we need to do is come in here and really darken up these areas around her and just sort of focus on this light area on her face. OK, so back to our, our tone and color. So I brought up that contrast, and that's bringing in a little bit more darkness around her. And so we're more focused on the light right there. Well, one thing we could do is actually we can head into our midtones. And by pulling up on the midtones, that's going to bring a little bit more light into her skin tone. And then we can head down into our blacks, hold down my J key, and I'll just pull in a little bit of true black in here. Probably about 15, just like that. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard,
just sort of a base foundational shot that we can go in and modify with effects now. So the first thing I'm going to do is, or the first thing I'm going to do after modifying my tone of color is I'm going to head into my local adjustments tab. And this is going to go back to that creating darkness in these areas right here. And we're going to use a reflected gradient to bring in darken adjustment layers onto those sides. So I'm going to make sure I'm set to darken here. I'm going to hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. Then I'm going to head up to my shape and I'm going to choose reflected gradient. And so now if I choose reflected gradient, if I drop this down, it has two gradients that are reflected at each other so that the inside of this mask is protected. So I can rotate this with this small handle and I can use this big handle to move it and I'll just kind of place this over the light on her face right there. And then I can use these perforated edges to feather it a little bit. Oops. So now if I turn this adjustment off and on, sweet. I really like how that's just making us look into this light. So the next thing I want to do is I want to remove this, I think it's the back of a chair from the background. And an easy way to do that is just to paint on light, kind of like we did earlier with the, the reflection of her shadow. So I'm going to add an adjustment. I'm going to head down to paint with color. And I'm going to make sure it's set to black. Then I'm just going to brush this on, <laughs> make sure my opacity is at 100. And then I can just brush this on like that. And don't worry too much. I know I can see this sort of this sort of black blob right there. But we're going to go in and we're going to add some effects. And that's going to bring in a little bit more darkness around here. OK, so now let's head into our effects tab here. And I'll add a filter. And I'm going to add my tone curve filter. And the reason I want my tone curve is because I want to bring in a lot of true black around our model here. But I don't want it applied, or I don't want all of it applied inside of her face. So let's go in here to our tone curve. And I'm just going to pull over on this black a little bit. And you can see that by pulling to the right on that black, it's basically removed this background from her. And now all we can see is true black which actually I really, really like in this photo because it really, really makes us focus on just her and we're not distracted by any of the other elements in the background. So now I'm going to go in here. I'm going to pull back on the shadows just a hair. And then again, I'm going to go back into my midtone area and I'll just pull up on it a little bit. Perfect. And the reason I'm pulling up on this, this mid-tone area right here is because I'm trying to go in here, and if I zoom in, by pulling down and up on this point right here, you can see that the color and the light in the hair really, really comes to life. But if I do that, then all of this light on her face gets a little bit too blown out. And I want some detail still there. So I'll zoom out again. And now I'm going to grab me my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard. Make sure I'm set to paint out. And I'm going to lower the opacity to about 30 or so. And then I can just paint this off of the areas that I think are just a little bit too strong with this tone curve. Sweet. I actually want to remove a little bit more light from her face. So I'm actually going to head into my local adjustments tab. I'm going to add a new local adjustment layer. I'm going to make sure it's set to darken. And I'll up the opacity. And I'm actually going to paint this on her face real quick just to remove some light or see what details we have in here. That's a little too intense on there, but. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, that looks better. And then we can head down into our mid-tones, or our highlights rather, and our whites. And we could pull those up. 
But I think that looks a little bit better, a little bit more controlled on her face. And let's actually warm that up a little bit. Sweet. Okay. I really like how this is coming along so far. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, oops. We basically have it kind of the way I want it. I think this works really, really good for the shot. I think the last thing that we could do to, to kind of finalize this photo is we could go into effects here. I could add a filter and I'll add a texture and I'll go into my categories and let's use paper. And I really love this yellowed rice paper. Or let's see what they got. Ooh, I like the tattered though. I think the tattered looks really good. I don't know about the tattered blue, but ooh. Okay, so I think we're gonna go with this. Oh, not that one. I really like that tattered red. I think that looks really cool. And I can kind of pull back on the saturation a bit to remove some of that red. But wow, I really like that. And let's pull up on the opacity a little bit. Perfect. So now if we get the backslash key in our keyboard, I really like how grungy and moody we've made this portrait. I think it works really well for this type of shot. Okay, so I'm gonna head back into browse real quick. Are there any other questions before we head on to our last photo? And it's actually gonna be the same photo. So I'm just gonna right click this and I'm gonna create a version. And then I'll reset this version. And we'll head into the develop tab again. Okay, so this one's gonna be a lot quicker and a little bit easier of a black and white portrait to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into my camera profile and I'm gonna use this, actually, yeah, let's use this on one landscape because it brings in a little bit more contrast. Okay, so now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I really like just sort of the foundational look set by just modifying our camera profile. So I'm just gonna leave that how it is. Well, for this next portrait with this photo, I think what we should do is just really hone in on her expression and her face. So let's just crop really tightly. I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna choose a one by one ratio. And then I'm gonna hold down shift, I'll pull this up. And what I'm trying to do here is just remove sort of any skin tones from the photo on these edges and in these corners and sort of frame her expression and her face with her hair. So I think that looks pretty good. We can always go, I can remove that pretty easily just with a local adjustment. So I think maybe we'll pull up just a hair more. And let's do that. Uh, let's bring a little bit more of her hair in here. There we go. Okay, so now it kind of looks like her face is being framed inside of her hair, which is exactly what we want. Well, you can also see over here that we have this kind of little area of shoulder, and to get rid of that, we can just go in here to our local adjustments tab, I'll make sure I have a local adjustment layer set to darken. We'll just kind of brush that on and then we'll make it dark. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go into our effects tab here. And we're gonna convert our photo to a black and white. So we're gonna add a filter and we're gonna convert this image to a black and white by using our black and white filter. So I know I, before I said that with portraits, I usually convert it to a black and white with LUTs, but with this shot, since we're kind of gonna go in and bring in a lot of mood and grunge 
to this portrait, I think we could use this black and white to our advantage and go into the tone area and pull in some of the contrast and things like that from the actual black and white filter. So with this black and white filter, what I typically do, if I'm not sure what one of these presets is gonna do, is I just click on it, and then I find which one I like the best. And I think, green similar. I really like this green one. I think that looks pretty good. Infrared's a little too strong. My key's too strong. We'll just use green. Green's pretty good. So now let's go into our tone area for this black and white. And I'm gonna pull back on my brightness a little bit. Ooh, right about there. Perfect. And then I'm gonna pull up just a little bit of my whites and the, just a hair on the shadows. So now if I turn off this black and white filter, I really like what that's doing to the sort of overall mood to this shot. And we can actually go in here to our fill. No, we'll leave it how it is. So I'm gonna add another filter here really quickly. And the next filter I want to add, I wanna bring in a lot of detail. I don't know if you guys follow a, a guy by the name of Lee Jeffries on Instagram or Facebook, but he takes these really intimate, gritty, sort of street style portraits of people. And you can tell that he adds in a lot of post-processing detail and contrast, but it really brings out the textures of their skin. So I think this would look awesome with a lot of detail as well. So we'll add a dynamic contrast filter. And we're, let's go in here for our dynamic contrast and let's actually use Surreal. And the reason I'm wanting to use Surreal is because it really brings out all of the details and textures in this expression. And I, I just love all of the details that the black and white brings into the shot. So I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good like that. Maybe we could just lower the opacity of hair. Okay, so now let's go in here and with this portrait to kind of stylize it, we're gonna go in and paint just a little bit of light into certain areas. So I'm gonna go into my local adjustments tab. I'm gonna make sure I have a new local adjustment set to darken. I'm gonna make sure that my masking or my local adjustment brush is selected. And I'm gonna lower the opacity to about 40 or so. And then I'm just gonna brush in some dark light into the areas where there's shadows on this portrait. I'm gonna raise up my brush a little bit and I'm just gonna paint some more darkening over here, over here. I think that looks pretty good. So now if I go over to my local adjustment layer, I'm gonna change this to darken on skin. Now if I turn this off and on, we can probably pull back a little bit. But you can see it does an awesome job of just kind of adding in a little bit more contrast under her skin, adding in a little bit more mood. So I really like how that's working right there. So we get the backslash key in our keyboard. I think we're right on the right track. The one or the couple last things I wanna do is I'm gonna head into my local adjustments tab again. I'm gonna add an adjustment and we're gonna create sort of a small vignette to really bring attention into her eye right there. So I'm gonna make sure this is set to darken. And to create this small vignette, I'm actually gonna hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my adjustable gradient. And now I'm gonna head up to my shape. I'm gonna choose center. And when you're using the adjustable gradient and you have your shape set to center, it's basically going to protect all of the areas inside of your mask and apply your local adjustment outside of it. So if I drop this down on her eye and I pull this in a little bit, you can see that the area inside the mask is protected while all the areas outside of it 
are darkened. Well, I really like doing this with portraits because you can already tell that if I move over here, even just that one little bit of light right there is super interesting on this portrait. See how it just funnels your eye into this area, right into our eye? And so what we can do here is we can make it even just a little bit darker, but we can feather it quite a bit. So now if I turn this off and on again, it's making it seem like there's light hitting there. And so we're more focused on that eye area. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I really like how we've ended up with this portrait. And I think one thing we could do just to really finish it off, we could add a filter and we could add a vignette. just like that. And now we ha sort of have this mysterious black and white, really grungy street style portrait in just a few minutes using Photo Raw 2020.